PA has been rocked by another public fallout with a prominent member of parliament after Pum's Levin Dam was given a sabbatical she did not request. The party's shadow minister for communications, telecoms and postal services has been removed from her post and replaced by her deputy, Zach Mbele. The DA's chief whip, Natasha Mazzoni, says it is common for the party to adjust its shadow cabinet after each elective congress. Mazzoni joins us now to talk more about this. Natasha, evening. Thank you so much for your time. So why would the DA give Nat uh, Pum's Levin Dam a sabbatical that she did not request? Well, you see, it's a, it's a very difficult situation when you're in a leadership position and you see someone in your cabinet who is struggling with a, an illness. Kumzile has been very brave and she's been very open about the illnesses that she's suffering from. Uh, many of them are chronic. Uh, she's had a three-month leave period, and I don't think that in the three-month leave period um, she took enough of the time required to, to look after herself. Um, now, given the fact that Parliament goes into somewhat of a recess period over December, January, until we open in February, uh, John Stenhausen and I thought that it would be a, a very good time for Pumzile to take the time that she needs to fully heal um, and to, to regroup and, and to care for herself. Um, so unfortunately, this is a situation of damned if you do and damned if you don't. And I, I think that we erred on the side of caution. Uh, I certainly have taken Pumzile's health as being my top priority. I know that John has done the same. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm held accountable for uh, worrying about a member of my caucus's health, then so be it. I'm ready to defend that decision. But I believe that Pumzile's health must, must absolutely come first. But surely then, Natasha, Pum Eleven Dam, as an adult, should have been the one to make any final decisions on her health because, as you would have seen, she is now reading this as the party using her poor health to sideline her. Look, this decision isn't made without consultation. Uh, Pumzile has had a chance to speak to John at length. Uh, she's had a chance to speak to me. We have been in talks uh, quite regularly over, over WhatsApp and in the House. Um, Pumzile has not been well, um, and she herself has documented uh, quite openly on social media the fact that she has not been well. The fact of the matter is John and I also have a duty to make sure that our shadow cabinet operates optimally. Um, and this was the perfect time for us to offer Pumzile the sabbatical. Um, at the end of the day, John Steenhuisen, as the leader of the party, decides who the shadow cabinet is in consultation with uh, his executive authority. And it was decided that uh, the sabbatical would be offered to Pumzile. If she chooses not to take the sabbatical, that's her choice. But the shadow cabinet has been appointed, and Zach Mbele was not her deputy. Zach Mbele was actually the shadow minister of small business and enterprises, and he has now been moved into that mm -hmm. portfolio, and he will be the shadow minister of communications. You speak of consultation and Pums Levin Dam being offered a sabbatical. Well, the language she used was that she was informed of the sabbatical. She also goes on to say that her illness did not interfere with her duties in the party. Do you disagree with that? Um, I do disagree with it. Uh, I, I have a sick note from her doctors uh, that had her booked off for a substantial period of time. And by no fault of her own, and with complete consultation with me, uh, Pumzile did not attend many of the sittings of the House because her illness requires bed rest, and it does make her feel dreadful. Um, and I don't expect her to sit in the House or to sit in committees when she's feeling dreadful. Um, and by her own admission, she was feeling terribly ill. So I do think that it's interfered with her work. And I want her to take this opportunity to fully heal because I know how much she has to offer. And I, I'm, I, I, I'm taking great pain, I must tell you, uh, from seeing these articles doing the rounds uh, saying that Pumzile feels sidelined. That certainly was never anyone's intention. And I don't believe that looking after someone's health and encouraging them to look after their health themselves uh, should ever be frowned upon. I think that we should encourage it more in the workplace. But she says... We look after Health. Uh, forgive me for uh, jumping in there, Natasha. She says, uh, and I want to quote this tweet, she says, uh, did I drop the ball while I was sick? No. Even when I was sick, like uh, I do when I am well, did I still outperform many of my colleagues? Yes. I asked for no sabbatical. I determined my health. My doctors determined my health, not my employer. And now, subsequent to the news of the sabbatical, she's now tweeted that you as the DA will be hearing from her lawyers. Will you fight her on this? Look, the, the fact of the matter is this, Tembekile. She can bring her lawyers and she can do whatever she would like. 
She is still a member of parliament. She has not been removed as a member of parliament. She has been removed as the shadow minister of communication. And according to the rules of the Democratic Alliance, the leader has absolute prerogative as to who he or she appoints to the shadow cabinet. So a decision has been made and no court of law uh, and certainly, uh, you know, no, no lawyer's letter is going to, is going to change the mind of, of the party once a decision has been made. We believe that we have taken the best interest of our caucus and Ms. Van Damme into consideration, and we remain steadfast in, in the determination of our shadow cabinet. So just final question then. If this is going to go all the way to Pumzilev and Dam, then having her lawyers approach you as the DA, her party, and essentially her employer, is this the beginning of the end of the road for her as the party? And second question, do you as the DA tonight have an appreciation of how this then feeds into a very real perception that you as the Democratic Alliance have a generally poor handling of relations with black leaders in particular? Look, I don't go into race baiting at all. It's never been uh, anything that I enter into. And I think that the color of our skin has absolutely nothing to do with the way we do our jobs. So that part of the question, I, I absolutely refuse to entertain. I find that rather insulting. But when it comes to the DA's handling of issues, unfortunately, we live in the age of social media. And it's not just the DA, it's any political party that has any form of disagreement or any unhappiness within its party. It lands up on social media pages. I do think that it's unfortunate that people take to social media before they take to their own party and discuss things on social media platforms. And I do sometimes question why it's done on such a public platform. But I sincerely hope that it's absolutely not the end of the road. I see no reason why it is the end of the road. And I see no reason why this, uh, this issue can't be sorted out amicably. Natasha Mazzoni, the Democratic Alliance Chief Whip, thank you so much for your time tonight. Let's stay with the story then. Bring in an analyst, Asanda Saulen Washeng, joining us from Cape Town. Asanda, good evening. So you, I would imagine, heard the last bit of Natasha Mazzoni's response then. I want to ask you uh, the same question. Is this the beginning of the end for Fumzi Levendam and the DA? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think um, if I was employed by her, I would definitely be writing my resignation letter because there's a deep sense of paternalism. There's a deep sense of undermining that I'm feeling, and it's not even, you know, a conversation about me, this insistence that even as she says, she didn't ask for a sabbatical, but she's been granted one. There's a suggestion that, uh, you know, the, the political party, i.e. her employer, knows more about her health and what she should be doing about her health than she does. To me, this smells a little bit like, you know, there's uh, some discrimination based on the grounds of of, uh, of ability here. And I think she might even have a case actually that she can take to the, to the labor court over and above the fact that the DA has been on a mission to reduce and remove black leaders, particularly those who are seen to be strong contenders for leadership and those who are seen to have the potential and ability to challenge the existing leadership. And I think, you know, having also supported Balinduli Pumzile definitely was always going to be the firing line. If you remember, even before Congress, people were asking about her and her status and where she is when other people are being, uh, you know, expelled from the DA for various reasons. So they've just found, you know, the, the hook that they needed. And that's what they're running with. And if you listen to what Natasha just said right now, it's very clear that it actually has nothing to do with uh, you know, Pumzile, it's all about the party and what the party has decided. Even that, you know, very sort of blasé attitude uh, about, you know, her response to race, saying it's race baiting, because apparently the DA lives in a world where race has no impact whatsoever, when we know we come from a history of race-based policies, and we know we come from a history where, you know, relations between black people and white people are racialized always. Just on and that point, then... And are, you know, conflicts that go beyond uh -huh. just being read in the norm. Just on that point that you make, Asanda, about the race element. I mean, there is quite a list of black DA leaders that we can go through, be it Musi Maimane, Patricia Delo, and the rest of them who've left uh, very publicly in a very public spat with the organization. How well calculated is this a move by the DA? And do you expect that it will hurt their reputation in any way? Or can they afford to lose Pums 11 Dam? I think the DA can afford to lose Pums 11 Dam if you understand with the DA's new um, audience, or maybe forever audience, but one we're in denial about, which is white people. The DA wants to attract 
has gone on a mission to attract particularly white people. They initially used to attract uh, middle class and upper middle class white people, but now they're going for poorer white people. That's why you're seeing more of them more of the political party going into into former poor white areas. That's why you're seeing, you know, John Steinhazen, who is an uneducated man by, you know, South African leadership standards that we hold so dearly, now being in leadership. That's why you're seeing Natasha Mazzoni, who have fact, in fact, also didn't complete her own postgraduate qualification being in leadership because it's very clear who the DA is trying to attract. Now, if black people continue to vote for the DA, even as it makes itself clear that it's not interested in the black vote, then that's really on black people to start asking themselves questions about, you know, who, why they would throw away their vote and, and who they think has the power and ability to represent them. I mean, as I've just said, just listening to the blase attitude, listening to the paternalistic, I know better than you attitude of, uh, you know, the previous speaker really just like left me like perplexed about, you know, this idea that somebody can know better than you uh, when it comes to your own health, when you're talking about a grown woman who has worked before and obviously is not experiencing whatever illnesses she's experiencing for the first time and has a clear idea of her own capabilities. And so I'm seeing a DA that is discriminating against her based on, on her race and, and the fact that they see her as a challenge and also discriminating against her based on, you know, her diminished abilities in terms of the, the sicknesses that she has. And instead of working with her to find a solution, they've decided to find a way to sideline it. And I find it quite interesting that she's talking about how, you know, there's less work to do now because there's recess, there isn't as much stress. And yet at the same time, they're saying, take a sabbatical. You would think that this is the perfect time to step her back in and ease her back in so that by the time uh, parliament is in re is, Parliament gets out of recess. She's ready, and she has a, a, a much better way, and has and has basically figured out how to manage workload vis a vis whatever illnesses she's facing. So I don't buy that story that they're telling at all. I think it's very clear, and she's made it very clear okay. that it's a political decision, and no 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 law or no court can actually stand in its way. Political analyst Asanda Saule Mwasheng, thank you so much for speaking to us tonight.